So resolutions above 1080p or Full HD are fast becoming the mainstream, or at least tech companies want them to be. A lot of flagship phones from this year sported 1440p displays, and Sony's Xperia Z5 Premium even has a 4K screen. But do you need a 4K display on a smartphone? Can the average person tell the difference? We answer these questions and more in today's episode of NCIX Tech Tips, because I have seen too many people close to me destroy themselves through pixel addiction. It's real, and it doesn't care whether you've seen Adam Sandler's movie, which by the way was terrible. Although I haven't seen it, because I heard it was terrible. I haven't seen it either. Now you may be wondering what we have here in front of us. This is the world's most expensive game of dominoes. Sorry, excuse me. So what we have are phones in a row. We've got Key's old LG Optimus G, sporting a 1280 by 768 resolution on a 4.7 inch screen. It was actually the first in LG's G line of phones. So you might say it's the OG. Uh, also added to that line in the future were the G2, G4, 3, and G4. This is Jack's current phone, the Sony Xperia Z2, which features a 1920 by 1080 resolution on a 5.2 inch screen, and it's fall resistant. No, I won't do it again. Uh, and then finally, this right here is Key's current phone, the Samsung Galaxy S6, which sports a 2560 by 1440 resolution, 5.1 inch display. But talking about the number of pixels on a screen quickly becomes meaningless unless you know the size of the screen containing them. That is why for phones, it's often more important and relevant to talk about the display's pixels per square inch or PPI. This is a measure of how densely packed the pixels in a display are. So a lower PPI means you're more likely to be able to actually see the individual like square pixels, whereas a higher value means that you'll probably just see a smooth, natural looking image, especially on curves. So for some context, a 24 inch 1080p monitor has a PPI of around 91.79. A 27 inch 1440p monitor comes in at around 109 and a 32 inch 4K monitor is a whopping 137.68 pixels per inch. But then you compare that to the phones we have in front of us. The Optimus G with its measly 768p resolution has 317.6 pixels per inch because it's so small. The Xperia Z2's 1080p screen is 423.64 and the Galaxy S6, that is a 575.92 pixel per inch animal. It's an animal. Seriously though, those are some tiny pixels. Now, there's sort of a legitimate reason for Samsung in particular to include a 1440p display on their flagship device, but we'll get into that later. At this point, you're probably thinking, but Linus, it makes sense to have high resolutions on phones because even though they're super small, we have to hold them super close to our faces, idiot. To which I would say, whoa, hey, let's back off with the name calling. And yes, viewing distance is an important factor here though. Most people sit about 30 inches away from a desktop monitor. That is about, uh, I don't know, a little over a meter for the metric folks out there. While you might hold your phone about 10 inches or 25 centimeters from your face. But at what viewing distance then do pixels become indistinguishable so you can't see the blocks? For this, we're gonna turn to Apple marketing, retina. If you're looking at a retina device at its recommended or, you know, expected viewing distance, you're not supposed to be able to distinguish the individual pixels. So Steve Jobs' mob introduced the Retina branding with the iPhone 4, which had a three and a half inch screen claiming that when holding the device around 10 to 12 inches from your eyes, you wouldn't be able to differentiate the pixels from each other at a PPI of about 300. And well, Retina is a fancy term meant to sell more Apple devices, we can use that core concept to understand this 
issue better. In fact, there's even a handy retina display calculator on the web that basically gives the optimal viewing distance when you input the resolution and screen size. And it also gives the PPI and aspect ratio, so that's pretty cool too. The link will be in the video description. So pretty much any device can become retina if you move it far enough away from your eyes. It turns out a 24 inch 1080p monitor becomes retina at 37 inches. My quotations are gonna get more aggressive every time we say this. A 5.4 inch 1080p phone, eight inches. A 4.7 inch 768p phone, 11 inches. A 5.1 inch 1440p phone, six inches. And a five and a half inch 4K phone like the Z5 Premium, will be retina at four inches. I don't know about you guys, but I can't even focus on it from that close. Although, me not being able to focus on something isn't really news, so let's move on. Now, I think we can all agree that most of the time, we're not using our phones from that close to our eyes. Maybe when you're lying on your back in bed, but that's uh, pretty hazardous, thanks to the uh, dropping your phone on your face, uh, you know, epidemic that's going around. So pretty much any mid-tier phone these days is going to be retina from a normal distance, which leads us finally to the moral of the story. We shouldn't be worrying about phone resolution anymore. 1080p is pretty much all you need in a phone, with 1440p being somewhat noticeably sharper at a display size of around, you know, five to six inches. Not only because of it makes no difference, but because it will also save you some battery life and performance in games, since your processors won't have to work as hard to pump out all those extra pixels. Now, all this assumes, though, that you're using your phone as, you know, I don't know, a phone. Some phones are starting to be used for other things, virtual reality devices among us, which brings us to the Samsung angle. All of their flagship phones from this year have 1440 screens because they're natively compatible with Samsung's Gear VR headset. So that sort of makes sense because we're using complicated optics and delivering only certain pixels to each eye. So more resolution is basically more better in that context. Not to mention that AMOLED displays work slightly different from LCD displays on a microscopic level. And so higher resolution becomes a little bit more necessary to get a nice crisp image. So let us know guys. What screen resolution are you running on your phones? Do you agree with what we're saying? Do you strongly disagree? Do you disagree just a little bit? Leave a comment below and let us know exactly how you feel. Although not too much of how you feel. You know, we're not your counselor. Thanks for watching, guys. Click here to watch more videos. Click here to follow us on social media. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this from NCIX.